As the traffic rumbles by on its way to the northbound motorway, it's hard to imagine that when Hopton House was built nearly 200 years ago on the outskirts of Stevenage in Hertfordshire, it was surrounded by farmland. Then its owner was a wealthy eccentric whose chief distinction was the annoyance he caused his neighbours by keeping three separate packs of hounds. Eleven years ago, his descendants had fallen on hard times. They sold the house to a Californian company, Revel Biochemicals. Today there are few signs that Hobden House is different from any of the hundreds of small stately homes up and down the country that have been acquired by trade unions or big business as conference centres or convalescent homes. Yet we have evidence that behind this gate are being practised some of the most dangerous forms of genetic engineering ever conceived and practised moreover without the controls that so many scientists have insisted are essential for the safety of us all. Not surprisingly, perhaps, Revel Biochemicals are not very responsive to inquiries. Letters, whether addressed here or to America, go unanswered. Telephone calls are put through to offices whose occupants never seem to be in. Excuse me. Hey, excuse me. Can you tell us how to get into this place? You expect it? No, we're, we're BBC television nationwide. Uh, we just want to get in. Where's, where's the best way in? We ha I can't get in. No, you ain't got an appointment, no? No, we haven't. We just want to get in and have a word with the boss. No, you've got to have an appointment, mate. Sorry. Um, no, more than my job's worth. You get people tramping all over here. I'm in a, you know. If we can just get into the office to, to sort of make ourselves known, say who we are. I oh, just want to really want to see someone, whoever's in charge. I don't think they'll see you. I'll check it out. Well, no. you, know, we've... you hang on there a minute. Okay, thanks. Local people too are denied access to Hopton House, but they're not happy about what goes on inside. Just all the noise. Um, all people coming and going. It's terribly busy and lots of noise. What kind of noise? Well, sort of animal noises, I guess. The barking, howling. Yelling. Well, it's like dogs' noises. It's just annoying everybody around you. I mean, especially later in the evening when there's not much traffic. You, all you hear is loads and loads of noises. I should think there's some sort of experiment going on. There. What kind of experiment? Well, most probably it's about animal, animal experiments. Why do you say that? Because we actually hear some uh, peculiar noises, some frightening noises coming from that direction. Is that... Do people find that worrying? Oh, yes. Uh, they've really trying to have a meeting because they want to do something about it and they have to do something about it. A, a public meeting locally? Yes, that's right. All we know is we deliver about a five or six hundred pound of meat every week. It's good business for us and that's all we know about it. Five or six hundred pounds, that's a five lot, isn't it? Pounds. Yes, it's a good business, yes. What kind of meat? Well, horse meat and uh, lambs and whatever comes, you know, whole full and all that. How do you deliver it? Do you get inside? No, no, I go as far to the gate. And, and drop it there? Drop to the gate, someone will come and uh, take off me. Have you ever been inside? No, never been inside at all. How long has this been going on? Oh, for a month, a month, a month. The man reputed to be behind Revel Biochemicals UK operation is Hans Joachim Lugner, a somewhat elusive figure who for the last eight years has studiously avoided the limelight. Good morning. So what happened when we well, made a further on, visit to Hopton House was a surprise. Nicholas Woolley, we yeah. wondered if we could do a brief interview with the proprietor. Uh, I'm afraid not. Uh, we're all very busy here uh, at the moment. Are you the proprietor? Uh, yes. Um, am I right in saying that your professor... We are all very busy indeed. We have a lot of research to do and uh, I don't know why you're here. Please do tell me. The thing is that we've had reports about the work on animals going on here. And you know that's a matter of great concern. We wondered if we could come in to do a little filming and a brief no, interview. No, uh, because there's no, there's no point. Uh, there's no work on animals going on here at all. We've had reports from outside of people... Uh, Neighbours yeah. round about here with hearing the noises and so on, and also we've had reports that there is work on uh, animal research being done in this no, laboratory. No, I don't know really where to get this idea because it's entirely untrue. There's no work on animals here. Maybe I, come in. I, no, I've told you there's no work on animals here. I'm sorry, I don't see as much use uh, really. It wouldn't uh, take I mean, long. Honestly, no, I'm sorry, but it's not possible. Then. Sorry. Uh, Hans Lugner was born in 1931, just before Hitler's rise to power. After a brilliant academic career in Germany, he was offered the chair of genetics at Princeton University in America. He was then 25. 
1965, he won a Nobel Prize for work on the replication of animal cells. He also made an outstanding contribution to the early work on understanding leukaemia. Yet strangely, within five years of winning the Nobel Prize, his career was in ruins. The cause of his temporary eclipse was this book, Genetic Engineering, Myths, Realities and Possibilities. In it, he put forward a series of proposals which many of his colleagues thought went beyond the bounds both of scientific practicability and of morality. He claimed that within 30 years, pieces of the genetic structure of different creatures, even in the higher orders, would be combined to create totally new species. In the uproar that followed, Professor Lugner left America for Europe. Hans Lugner's first stop was Switzerland, but after three years he disappeared. Then, two years ago, the Sunday Times published these photographs of him, taken in a London street. The paper asked two important questions. Is he a genius or a madman? And was he working in England? We showed those photographs and the film we shot ourselves at the gate of Hobden House to Claude Egoutier, a former student of Professor Lugner's. Yes, I looked at the film which you showed me. And I'm quite certain that the man was Professor Hans Lugner, who taught me genetics at the University of Bern. What was he like when he taught you, he taught you at Bern? Ah, he was brilliant. Well, he was brilliant, unquestionably brilliant. But like most people, I thought he was eccentric and even a little mad. His colleagues used to say that his mind was as chaotic as his laboratory and that you could never really be certain as to what went on in either. But now we do know something of what goes on in Professor Lugner's laboratory. These pictures, taken inside Hobton House, came into our possession recently. They show, beyond question, that contrary to his statement to us, Professor Lugner is continuing to work on animal research. And since Hobton House is not registered with the Home Office, the conclusion must be that the experiments are illegal, since they are not subject to statutory control. The question that remains unanswered is whether Professor Lugner has abandoned the revolutionary concepts of genetic engineering outlined in his controversial book more than ten years ago. On the basis of the film evidence, it's hard to know. But that's not all. As we were leaving Hobton House, our attention was caught by strange, not to say alarming, noises coming from within the grounds. And in the light of what happened later, we make no apology for the fact that our investigations involved violating private property. We didn't immediately recognize the significance of what we saw first when we entered Hopton Park. But these pictures, taken in very difficult conditions at 200 yards distance, disclose a reality more terrifying than anything our wildest suspicions had suggested. Not just the recombination of genes to make new species, but the recreation of species that died out millions of years ago. Showing considerable courage, our cameraman, Nigel Curtin, decided to go a little closer. I need, I need. Just At this point, Curtin retreated. I'm there, I'm there, I've got it. I'm there, I'm there, I've got it. 